Good morning, gamers. Welcome back. I am the AMDM Lee. This is my coffee, and you're watching Bridgewater Nights. It's a little hot. Fresh coffee. So, this is Bridgewater Nights, I believe. Yes. So, quick update as to what happened on, on the last session of Bridgewater Nights. So, they had had a little, um, let's see, previously they had gone uh, to investigate, uh, go to report to Naren. They got attacked by the green dragon, or the green dragon attacked the druid, which the green dragon was illusioned to look, was was actually an undead beholder, uh, illusioned to look like a green dragon. There was a bunch of druid hippies. I, I, they were druids, they were all outside, pro well, they, they weren't, they were peace-loving individuals outside. Um... protesting the capture of this druid um, saying he was unfairly unjustly uh, imprisoned and blah 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 um, I use the word hippie because it brings about a certain connotation uh, and look was, yo hell no we won't go type thing not to say you think it's protesters I'm I, I, I've, I was young once. I was in college. I remember how it goes. So uh, so they were out there. Well, before that, then they decided, after they fought the thing, they went and rested and went and got a couple more weapons. They had another shopping episode, yeah. Little quick thing. So they decided to come back. Now, this time, Gary is gone. They wake up the next morning, and Gary is gone. But they have experienced this sort of thing before, or at least Desiree had, and because... She's had that happen before. Just poof, disappeared out of existence. Um, so they're like, all right, we'll deal with that later. Let's go find out who sent this beholder, this undead beholder. And where did it come from and all this other. Uh, so they get to the, back to the castle. And they decided to infiltrate or two of the party members said, all right, let's search around and, and, and search out these uh, these guys and see who's the leader of it is. So Desiree's like, yeah, uh, the protest is good, but I want to do something, you know, uh, you know anybody that's willing to do a little bit more and, you know, trying to basically try to join the bad guys. So, uh, you know, yeah, I just want, I want to give more and, you know, do more than protest and, you know, uh, of course, Desiree's probably this big around, femme, femme fatale type situation. And so they do a look and say, hey, well, is there anybody that's uh, looks approachable? Looks like they're going to be easily approachable. Well, I said, yeah. There's just duties, making sure people, checking people, and making sure they have water, and all that. So they go up to him and they talk to him for a bit. And he's like, well, I'll check around. I'll see what I can do. And uh, he goes off and they see some guy selling like, you know, conch shell necklaces, you know, some little uh, beaded beads and all this trying to raise money for legal funds for the, for the strew that's been captured. So Desiree's like, yeah, I will buy some of these. Opens up. I got this much gold. And I said, you don't. You seem to be down to just five silver. And Desiree's like, what? I've been robbed. So after a couple of really good rolls, she saw the hippie. She knew immediately who had robbed her because it's the only person that I was like, yeah, he pats you on, checks you, make sure you're okay. And she's like, I'm going after him. So Desiree teams up with Val and they, they go after this guy. And she goes, oh, I'm going to go up behind him, and I'm just going to... She takes a quarter staff, and she just whacks the crap out of the guy. Crits on this whack. Boom! The guy's, ah! Oh, 
gets knocked down a little bit. And he turns and he sees her and he's like, what the, you fucking hippies. And then he sees her and she's there with the staff and she's getting ready to whack him again. And he turns to run. Well, Vanik is off to the side. He sees this and uh, he casts Restrain, which is one of his abilities. And these arcane chains fly out and just restrain the guy. And the guards eventually come over and do it. But they do search the guy's body and find their gold as well as some more. Oh, this is also my dagger. This is my short sword. You thief. You know, they basically robbed this, this crook right before the guards took him. So the guards have taken him in. Um, they decide they need to go speak to Naren. While they're here, they need to go finish up what they have to do. Um, Tarid is trying to get the trying to get some information. He's talking to the guards, trying to figure out which direction the dragon actually came in from. Um, which he's getting inspiration this coming up thing. I'm giving him my inspiration, or giving him the inspiration for the for checking with the guards and such. So they go in and they, they're like, all right, we've got to go find Naren. And Naren's not in his office, but one of the guards goes, yeah, I'll take you to him. They're in a council meeting, but I can take you there. So they go in there and they arrive at the council meeting with one of the council members just tearing up, going, blaming, basically blaming the party for all of the things that have happened in the last couple of days, in the last two weeks. The, the elemental attacks, the party has always been, Everything that's been going on, the major disasters that have happened, the party has been involved with. And she's just going off on uh, Lord Zachariah Kepowick's seminar on the third, the 19th, just going off on him about how bad uh, this party is. And Clay, being a party member, goes, hey, yeah, well, you're welcome for us saving the city. And then she turns and looks at him and goes, and see, they're even so rude to interrupt a council meeting. Um, so a couple of them back out. There's a few more exchanged words, cedar words. Uh, Lord Zachariah even exchanged a, a few words with them, with the uh, Hamelita. And before he storms off with, uh, with Naren and the party. Uh, he does agree to change the password to their base so they can get back into it. Uh, Naren is looking, they convince Naren, or ask Naren to look into the, who the guards were. And he says, well, give me a day. I've got to hunt down the, who was on what shift and whatnot. And then I'll get them some meat. So they said, all right, we'll do that. And then let's see, he goes, well, we know there was a beholder at this graveyard we went to before. Let's go back and check it out. They run into Buddy the cabbie, and he takes them to the graveyard, and they they go out, and it's the uh, I believe it's the Obsidian Grove um, Cemetery. So they go in there, and while they're there, these two orcs step out. They have this large metal orb in the hand tied to a rope, and the rope is wrapped around their arm. And they're dressed like the best way I could describe it was ninjas. So then the throwdown happened. They basically said they're here to stop the party from continuing their investigation. They need to drop it and go. And Desiree started to cast some magic. And they saw Desiree starting to cast magic. So it was initiative time. And I took down Terrid. I. They... Took down uh, Tarid twice. Uh, and Desiree went down. Because Gary wasn't there. Were you, Gary? You missed out. Okay. Um, so these two monk assassin... Or these two orc assassin barbarians. Now, I did make them orcs in the game. But as a DM, I reskinned another creature and made them into orcs. That way they not to know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's very fun. Yeah, I'll talk about that on uh, Sunday. So, yeah, so they, boom, smack down the party. 
The party smacked back. It was very close. <laughs> when two of the party members hit the ground, I began to worry about uh, what was going to happen to the party. But luckily, they got one of them on a crit. He goes down. Val Haris, the blood hunter, has this puppeting ability where she, on the, the before they completely die, they do one attack against an ally. So this thing turned and did an attack on the ally, and I did some massive damage on this ally and took him down pretty good, which the party was able to finish off. So that's where I stopped them because they were like, all right, let's go back and do this. I'm like, nope, nope. No, you don't get to rest. You don't get to do anything else. We are stopping the game right here. The party has a tendency to want to try to, after every little encounter, to stop. Go back and rest for another eight hours. I had to stop that. Because they don't know what's going to happen. They're in a graveyard. They used up everything they had, which it was a deadly encounter. If they didn't, they would have all, it would have been a TPK. Um, or they could have left. They should have left, but they didn't know. A couple of orcs. What do we know? They're just a couple of orcs. No, it's never just a couple of orcs. I don't play that way. All right. That's all I've got for now, guys. Well, actually, I have a lot more that I condensed down a little bit, and I'm already at 11 minutes. So that's all I've got for today. If you like these videos, please click on the like button. If you think someone else would like them, please click on the share button. Every like is an inspiration, every share is an advantage, and every subscription is an experience point. Help me gain 10 experience points by every second. I went too fast. I screwed that up. Help me reach 200 experience points so I can get... Let me reach 300 experience points so I can get the second level. And as always, the AMDM does hereby authorize you, the viewer, to gain 10 experience points. For every video that you share. Uh, yeah. Um, that's it, guys. So go forth and roll some dice.